What's up internet and welcome to the Yield Tomato Gaming channel with another pickups video for 2016. This is a rare occasion. I only got modern gaming stuff. Normally I get some older stuff, but I've been feeling more um more like playing some of the newer stuff. I've been neglecting a lot of that lately. So let's start with the atrocious number of Xbox One games I bought. Uh, there's a really good coupon running at the store I work at, so I decided to take advantage of it. And I managed to pick up... Let's start with Battleborn, which is getting a lot of comparisons to Overwatch, even though they're very different games, which is really depressing. Because I really love Borderlands, and I want this to be really good. So I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but... I'm hopeful. I feel like everyone's uh, unjustly criticizing it. But we'll see how it actually turns out. I also picked up a game that gets a lot of uh, unfair negative um, flack, which is DMC, Devil May Cry Definitive Edition. Um, I had issues with this game at first, um, but my issues were more about how you have to press and hold certain triggers to use the different weapons as opposed to just hot swapping them. Um, after I got over that, this is a really, really good action game. It's a really, um, actually a really good reboot in general. Um, and it actually could realistically serve as a prequel to Devil May Cry 3, the way the game ends and the setup and everything. Because if you look at the way the world is at the end of Devil May Cry 3, or actually even the beginning, uh, and then you compare it to how this game ends, suddenly everyone... It, it makes sense from that perspective. I'm a fan of the old series, so I was able to make a lot of these connections. Um, and 3 was actually my favorite, but this is actually a lot better than people give it credit for. Um, I played and beat it on PC, and I figured I should get it on console, so I got it on the Xbox One. Um, I do not regret it. I haven't opened this version yet, but again, I've played it already on PC. It's fantastic. Uh, people need to get the hell over themselves with the design things, because you know what? I got over it, and I've been a fan since, you know... 2002 with the original Devil May Cry, so whatever, bite me. Um, the other game I got on that nice coupon was Dark Souls 3. Um, I had a lot of trouble getting into the first Dark Souls, uh, but then I played Bloodborne, and oh my god, I got so freaking hooked on that game, and I went back to the first Dark Souls to give it another chance, and now I'm hooked on that game. Uh, I've been playing it for the last week straight, and I'm like over 50 hours in now, and I'm just having a ball doing it. So I can't wait to get into Dark Souls 3. Um, <laughs> might be a while though, because there's all kinds of things. I'm debating if I want to do New Game Plus on the first Dark Souls or not. Um, and I also picked up, because uh, I found the last copy at the store I work at, oddly enough, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. Um, my friend said this is probably the least loved of the games, but I feel like it's worth owning just because it's Dark Souls game. And I've gotten over my issues with that series, and I am in love with it now. So, you know, why not get it and add it to the ever-growing collection? Especially with that being the Definitive Edition, which ups all of the frame rate to 60, which is much loved, because there are a couple of really bad dips in the first Dark Souls on console. Um, I also, I pre-ordered this one, because I didn't know it was a thing, or no, I didn't pre-order it, but I caught it as it was released on Amazon.com. I played the hell out of Dead Island. So the fact that they put a definitive edition out made my day, because that game was sweet. Um, I have no idea if I'm going to have any friends to play with this time around, but I don't care because I really liked it. Um, and they did some massive overhauls on the game, like in terms of appearances and the, a little bit of the HUD re-altered. Uh, you can find comparisons all over the place online to see exactly what they look like. I think IGN did a really good one, though really showcases the difference in the lighting and the textures and everything. It, it looks almost like a remake more than it is a remaster. So I'm really excited to put that in and play that at some point. Um, but that's uh, five Xbox One games. I've not been giving this machine any love, really. Most of my love has gone to the PS4 because Japan supports it, and I like a lot of Japanese-built games, so, you know. Well, you know. Um, we're going to move on now to... The Wii U games we got, one of which being Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. 
Say what you will about the Sonic games, say what you will about these uh, minigame compilations. I like them. They are fun. You can have a blast with your friends with these. Um, I played a bit of, actually I think it was 20, whatever the last one was, the Winter Olympic Games. Um, I played a bit of that with uh, my buddy Jason and my fiance, and we had fun with it. It's, it. I mean, it's a bunch of weird little mini games. It's a lot like Mario Party in that respect, and it plays nicely. It's a lot of fun. So I'd recommend looking into these. They're actually very, very overlooked, and they're a lot of fun to play with friends. And you've got, you know, Sonic and Mario characters, so you're gonna. F there's a character you're going to like. Now, this next one, I was actually borderline depressed because uh, Amazon sold out immediately and I was able to get a pre-order in on GameStop. As mu many problems as I've had with them in the past with their pre-orders, they came through on this one with no problems. And that is Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I hate calling it this. Sharp Effie. It is freaking pound, okay? The pound sign, the number sign, it is hashtag is stupid. Anyway, um... This uh, special edition comes with a couple of neat little things in it. Uh, one of which is it comes with um, some art cards um, of some of the characters in their uh, idol outfits, which is really neat. Uh, it also comes with a small art book, which I am a sucker for art books straight up. And the other thing I'm a big sucker for that this comes with is a soundtrack. And it's actual, you know, J-pop music on there, which is really neat. And J-pop's really uplifting and it get, keeps you, you know, I don't know, it's hard to explain how it affects me, but I mean, it's really, you know, a bright and uplifting sound that they've got there, so it's really cool to have all that in this box. It's a really small box, too, so they really pack this nicely and tight. And that is all for the Wii U games. Now, the next game is a big collector's edition that I waited, I pre ordered and had been waiting on for a while, and I've not been hearing a lot of good things about it, which is really depressing. And that is Star Ocean Integrity and Faithlessness. God, that is a mouthful of a title. Um, <laughs> this game, unfortunately, is not getting very good reviews, um, but from what I've been hearing, there's a point in the game where you feel that they lost funding somewhere, like it just feels rushed in comparison to a lot of the earlier parts in the game. Now, this collector's edition, of course, it comes with a um, nice art book, and it comes with a soundtrack, which is always nice. It also comes with an exclusive set of art cards featuring the characters throughout the game, uh, and a steel bookcase to house the soundtrack with the uh, uh, with the game, which is cool. And the really slick outer box, which I'm going to show right here. That is awesome artwork on there. It's really cool. Um, it's a really uh, sturdy box too, which is nice. Um, it also has exclusive collector's edition DLC, including some in-game items for use and in-game battle music from the Valkyrie Profile series and previous Star Ocean entries, which is really neat. So, you can really mix things up with that. Um, again, it's really depressing that this game is not getting very good reviews. Um, but, that being said, I have, I'm still going to try it, and I'm probably still going to like it, because a lot of times, the people that are reviewing them, they... they focus too much on one thing and make that be the standout glaring thing, and a lot of times I don't feel that it's justified. I don't think it actually pulls down the overall experience as aggressively as a lot of them make it out to be. Um, but then again, I haven't played it yet, so I can't really form a true opinion on that. I'm really interested to see what my thoughts are on it, being a uh, not a, a diehard fan of the series, but you know, I enjoyed the previous entries on the PS2, and um, actually I played the PS1 a little bit too. Um, but yeah, so, collector's edition of that, really cool, I like having it, um, I like the art, the art's actually freaking sweet, so, and I'm a sucker for all that kind of stuff, if I could get more, um, art books for these, I would love it, I'd like to see the, not just the series, but any games, I like seeing how they came up with these designs, or what, uh, thought process they went through step by step until they got to the final product, so, you know, anyway, that's my pickups this time around, guys, what you think? Let me know in the comments below if you guys um, have any suggestions or if uh, you guys disliked or liked any of these pickups and what your thoughts were on them if you've gotten to play them or not yet. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel for all the uh, up-to-date videos, pickups, let's plays, all that good stuff. So until next time, take care.